For context, I live in Germany. My boyfriend's childhood home is old. How old, nobody knows exactly. It might have been built around the beginning of the 20th century, but it could be older. It's a three-level house with a huge archway at the first floor that marks its age. There are two stories I want to tell you. The first one happened when we had just started dating. My boyfriend had searched for his room key for quite a while. It appeared to be lost forever. One day I entered his room and there was the key, laying perfectly placed in the middle of the bed. When he came home from work, I mentioned that I was glad he had found his key. He looked at me confused and I pointed at the door where I put the key in. He said, I never found it. Later we asked his parents and sister if they had placed it there but they denied it. To this day, we don't know how it ended up there. The second story happened pretty recently. The building has two front doors. The inner front door squeaks remarkably if you open it, so everyone knows when somebody's coming inside. My boyfriend's mother and I sat at the dinner table. His dad was watching soccer on the TV next to us on the third floor. My boyfriend and his sister were out of the house. Suddenly, my mother-in-law and I heard the front door. Then, another door-like sound. Oh, someone must have come in, my mother-in-law said. She went down the first stair and said, Hello? No answer. She decided to take a look herself. Not a single soul in sight. At the exact moment she went down to look, my boyfriend opened the door and came in, just to see the two of us confused we asked if he was mocking us. He affirmed that he hadn't even been inside before, so the door wasn't him. He and his mom both told me that these kinds of things have happened to them before. Doors open, things move, sometimes you hear steps that aren't supposed to be there. Apparently, they call their ghost Herbert, after their uncle that passed away a few years ago. I guess it's a friendly soul. In the fall of August 2013, I was set to begin my first semester at Arizona State University in Tempe, and I had to attend an orientation in the middle of campus. After making the 30-minute drive earlier than anticipated, my grandma pulled into the parking lot of the First United Methodist Church where we exchanged conversation for about 15 minutes just to kill time. There was a gardener in front of us tending the flowers, and only one black sedan parked directly next to us that I hadn't noticed earlier when we pulled in. As we unceremoniously prepared to get out of the car, something caught my grandma's eye in her periphery as she reached for her seatbelt button in the direction of my passenger seat. She quickly gasped, placing her right hand on her chest as she chuckled and then quipped, Wow, I thought I saw a ghost. Looking directly at her, without turning as she let out another nervous chuckle, I asked her what she was talking about. The parking lot at this point was dead silent, and the gardener was busy tending the flowers in the building opposite of the Methodist Church. Not expecting much, I slowly and nervously turned to my right, where a four-door black sedan was parked to the right of us, only to come in direct eye contact with what seemed to be a woman of Asian heritage with a bob haircut, pinstripe suit business attire, staring at us for no discernible reason. With the dead stare they were giving us, it could be assumed that they had been staring for longer than we had noticed them. What made this individual terrifying was the lack of life in their eyes. I only looked for what felt like five seconds, but I could feel that glassy, uncanny valley, lights are on, but no one's home look. It's one like a corpse might have before their eyes were closed. 
The color of this entity's skin was a pale color that I could only associate again with a corpse at the time. Their mouth slowly developed into one of the most unsettling half-smiles I've ever seen as their dead eyes looked at me and my grandma, unwavering. In this deafening silence, similar to a panic attack or a fight-or-flight feeling, my grandma and I turned back to each other, chuckled uncomfortably, and slowly got out of the car, refusing to look at the terrifying entity or person in the car next to us. While my grandma claims she forgot about this incident, she believes it probably did happen when I bring it up to her. If anyone can help me with identifying this type of entity, or if you've had any experience with something similar, let me know. I know that certain areas of the Tempe campus are haunted. I couldn't find any information on an incident like this, though. Over the course of two years, I've had weird dreams about a very specific creature lurking in the attic. It always felt malevolent. Now I don't know if it's an actual thing or my subconscious messing with me, but it deeply unsettled me in ways that my dreams almost never do. As somebody who is always aware that they're dreaming, even dreams where I'm being hunted down don't scare me, but this does. There have been so many dreams about it, but a few stick in my head. The least threatening one was a dream where I'm playing video games in my room. I glance out of my bedroom door, and I see an arm dangling from the open attic. The hand moves like it's beckoning me to come closer. I don't, because, obviously, but I watch it. It never leaves the attic, but it keeps trying to get me to go to it. Another dream, I'm in a house I've never been in. My sister and nieces are in this house with me, and I get the impression that this thing is threatening my family. I'm angry, so I get vocally aggressive. I get my family out of there and go back to confront the thing. I see it, for the first time in all the dreams that I've had. It was a woman with light purple skin and dreadlocks. I don't remember how this dream ended, but there were more dreams after, never including my family again, just me. The most intense encounter I had was a dream where the attic was right above the bed I was sleeping in. I was lying there, very aware that it was watching me. I figured if I ignored it, it would go away. Wrong. It slowly pulled the covers off of me. After a few minutes of lying there, cold, Trying to decide if it was safe to pull the blanket back up, it grabs me by the throat and lifts me up about a foot off the bed and starts choking me. I felt like my lungs were going to burst when it let go and let me fall back onto the bed, gasping for breath. I don't know how many dreams I've had since this one, but I know it's been at least a year since I dreamt about it. I'm very uneasy around addicts now, and I always expect to look up and see it again when I pass underneath one, awake or not. Even right now, I keep throwing glances at the attic door right outside my bedroom. Nothing's there, of course, but it's still on my mind. If this thing is not my subconscious and it's an actual entity, I have no idea what it could be. In my limited experience with the paranormal, I've never encountered anything that felt malevolent before. Just this. My hope is that either my brain just decided it wanted to be terrified of addicts, or that this thing got bored with me and left me forever. This happened in 2018, in December, just before Christmas. Two of my friends and I, we were 17 at the time, and a cousin of mine who was 15, were camping in the woods. It was on the property of one of the friends that had come along. 
We were there for five days and pretty much did it all by ourselves, except for water. That we would hike back to the house to grab for the day, since it was pretty impractical to get water ourselves for five days. This region was relatively dry, with no water filters or anything like that. We'd lie down pretty early, which felt rather primitive, literally when the sun set. Every night we would hear boar around our tent and steps. Paranoia fueled it a lot, but we had a bow, two axes, and some big knives. One day though, and I think this was either the last night or the second to last, we were just having a chat after dinner, like we would often do, and we hear a scream. It was pretty odd. It didn't sound human, but I have no clue what animal would be doing it either. I know a fair amount of our country's fauna. I've heard a lot of their screams, but this one was just different. The scream sounded like it had a buildup, not like a scream where you immediately hear the loudest part and then it dies off, but like it started low, got really intense, and then stopped. It sounded far enough, say 50 to 70 meters or so, but then it happens again and again and again. Now, suddenly, it's coming from almost all sides and it was getting pretty close. It didn't sound super menacing, even though we were really scared, shooting my air gun with no rounds just to make a sound. It got to the point where the sound seemed like it was coming right to where the campfire couldn't shed light, just outside of what we could see. I remember that we had set up some traps for rabbits down the trail that day. So we gathered all the strength and courage that we could and we went there. The bait was gone, but the traps were unarmed. And that was a stupid idea anyway. Rabbits don't scream like that. We had some pretty strong flashlights, but we couldn't see a thing. All of a sudden, the sounds just stopped with no clear reason. It was the most terrifying experience I've ever had. And anytime somebody asks me for a scary story, I share this one. Also, where I live in Portugal, we don't have any cougars or anything like that that typically screams. Maybe there's no explanation, I don't know. But all I know is that it terrified me, and I still think about it to this day. Okay, so this is a story that took place when I was around eight years old in my neighborhood. I was next door neighbors with my best friend, Alex. We both went to the same school and always hung out every day after school. One day, I was bringing my Nintendo 64 to his house so that we could play together. Once I got into his house, his uncle was there watching the television so we couldn't use it. Today, I now know that he wasn't his uncle because my older sibling, who knew Alex's older sibling, told me that his parents rented out rooms to random people from their original hometown. So the uncle was just a random stranger from out of the country. He told us to go into his shed and search for an extra TV. So we opened the shed and started searching. We found an older television, but we couldn't use it. Then something started moving all the things around. We thought it was a rat, so at first we didn't mind. But then we heard laughter, something so scary that I tried to leave, but Alex told me not to worry. We kept searching around for the laughter and we eventually found this one doll that was around two feet tall. It was torn and battered, so we figured it was just broken. We just sat it down and decided to go hook up the television we'd found in his room. We played for a while until his uncle left the house for food and his parents were at work, so we were home alone. We started hearing noises at the house, but figured it was nothing. But then we heard the laughter. The doll was moving around the house carefully, 
which we saw through the small peak underneath the closed door. The doll was looking for something, which was probably us. We were both freaking out, but we knew we had to get away from the house. We opened the window and jumped out and ran toward my house. Somehow, the doll managed to look at us as we were running away through the window and just laugh. We stayed at my house all afternoon until his parents came home. Ever since that day, I've always had experiences, weird things at my friend's house, like having YouTube videos end abruptly and start playing other random things, like clown videos. I think it's a serial commercial from the 70s. I ignored all of these weird signs for the rest of my childhood, and recently we met up for a while since departing to different high schools. Somehow the topic of the weird things was brought up, and I asked if he remembered all those things. He did remember, which now makes me want to share the story, because apparently it wasn't just my imagination. I've had over a week to think about this, and I can't come up with a satisfactory, rational explanation. I live in the north coast of Northern Ireland, not far from the Giant's Causeway, just to give some reference that people might know. Just over a week ago, I was sitting watching television with my wife. I sit by one of the windows sometimes because there's a plug-in for my laptop there. My wife was sitting on the other sofa, so she couldn't see out of this particular window. It was around 8.30 and perfectly dark outside. If I looked out, I could see the lights of our local town, Ballymoney. It's tiny, more of a village, really. Just as at the scene, we're about three miles out, surrounded by farmland. Anyway, I'm watching TV and occasionally glancing out the window, when suddenly I see this bright light just over the fields. It's multicolored, and it kind of blooms, growing larger. At first I thought it was a firework, which would have been bizarre enough in late March, in the middle of the lockdown. Except it's too slow, if that makes sense. It brightened into maybe three different colors. It was hard to judge distances in the dark, but if I had to guess, I'd say that it was two acres or more away and larger than a family car, hanging maybe 80 to 100 feet up, pretty low. Eventually, it faded and disappeared again, not behaving anything like a firework, and far too large to be a flare. I said at the time that I thought I had seen somebody letting off fireworks. A few minutes later, I glanced out again, and there's a smaller light roving around in the same spot, but it vanished almost the moment I looked at it. This light was maybe a third of the size of the original and was moving left to right. I've thought about it ever since. The annual Ballymoney Town firework display is much further away and we can always hear it from home. Yet this was soundless. Helicopters and drones don't have lights like that. And again, if there had been a chopper out there so low and so close, we'd have heard it. A drone still strikes me as most likely. We wouldn't have heard it inside the house, and I guess it might have been rigged with powerful lights, but they would have had to have been incredibly powerful. So, I don't know. I've never, ever seen or heard a drone over that area in the daytime, and I'm out there all the time. Honestly, I think maybe I saw a UFO. No lights in the sky were reported in local news or on social media, though, and I haven't seen anything since, so who knows? I moved into my house about two years ago. It's a generally decent sized property with 14 and a half acres. I don't hate this house, but it is 100% cursed. I've always felt really uneasy going into the wooded area of this property. 
I would never go in there alone because I got really scared. I know that sounds very childish, but hear me out. There's a small abandoned cottage or shed in the woods, and that's the part that's always made me feel very faint, going within a five to 10 foot radius of it. There didn't seem to be anything particularly odd about this building, and there was nothing around it. A couple of months went by and I decided to go in alone, just to face my fear of those woods. I came upon the building and stayed on the trail so I wouldn't get dizzy and start to faint. This in particular scared the living bejesus out of me because I was looking at the building and I saw a woman circling it, humming lullabies and calling out for something. I think she was between the height of maybe 5'10 and 6 foot, with dark hair that went down to about her hips, and very pale skin. She was wearing a long white dress or nightgown that went down to her ankles, and held a children's toy in her hand. I called out, hello? And she just stared at me, still humming and circling the building but looking at me. I made the very dumb decision to step into that five to 10 foot radius and she lunged for me. I started running for my life out of the woods and she just kept chasing me. The second I stepped outside the tree line though, I turned around and she was gone. It wasn't until later that I was reflecting on it and I thought, wait a minute, I recognized that toy she was holding. I had the exact same one when I was little. After that, I started to go back. She's not always there when I go into the woods, but when she is, she's always holding a different children's toy, all of which were toys or plushies that I had as a kid or grew up with in my home. One of them was a big plush that I've had since I was born. I still have it because it's kind of my comfort item. But hers was an exact duplicate. That's what scared me the most. I'm pretty sure I'm not crazy. So my only conclusion is that I'm dealing with something very paranormal. My family owns a large piece of land in Missouri. It's near the highlands, but partially on the plains. It includes a lovely little chapel, a one-room schoolhouse, stables, and the plantation home. My family has owned the land for years. I grew up spending school breaks there. It was always enjoyable, regardless of the hard work I had to put in. Every Halloween, my family would do a local hayride and barbecue. It was great fun and everyone loved it. We decorated the entire property. The schoolhouse had all the original desks and materials left in it. So we tried to utilize it the most and the plantation home secondly. It wasn't super structurally sound, so we kept everybody on the first floor. Only family was allowed on the upper floors. Us cousins loved to set up and clean for the big night. The stables were a working area, so we left that to the adults. Nobody went inside the chapel because we wanted to make sure that it stayed in its original good condition. So we'd put up a fake little graveyard and that was about it. The school was abandoned and the house was a walkthrough. When I was 16, I was helping set up the walkthrough. It was cheesy, but fun. I was cleaning the ornate mirrors on the first floor when I heard laughter above me. Figuring it was my cousins, I kept working. I would hear the footsteps of them moving and their laughter for a while. When I got done, I called up that I was going to go help outside and I heard, all right, see you later, and more laughter. I walked out smiling because I found it cute that they were so immersed in the home. Imagine my confusion then, 
when I walked into all four cousins at the main house. I asked them how they had beaten me back, and they looked at me like I'd finally lost it. They told me that they'd been working on the chapel graveyard, and they'd been nowhere near the walkthrough. I told them it wasn't nice to try to trick me. We left it at that and continued on for the day. I only realized we weren't alone when I got a call from my youngest cousin, asking why I was running around upstairs in the plantation home. I got deathly quiet. When she asked me again, I could only say, I'm not even on the property. I'm in town. To this day, we've never figured out who exactly lives upstairs. They don't cause harm, but they do enjoy their mischief. Anymore, we keep in constant contact when we're visiting, just to be sure we know who we're dealing with. Or what. Just this weekend, my cousins from the city in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, visited me and my family down here in southern Pennsylvania, near Maryland. We live in the boondocks, and there are many trails for people who enjoy horseback riding and taking rides on ATVs. When my cousins got to my house, we decided to go exploring toward my neighbor's house, who lives in the middle of the woods, isolated in a log cabin. We walked a trail the whole way up there for about a mile, joking along the way. Let me give you a little backstory about the place. Back in the 1800s, there was a bar and a few small cabins for people to stay in. A group of men got drunk one night and attempted to shoot bottles off of each other's heads. People died and the wives of the men who had died burned down the bar and the cabins then were later hanged by the bar owners. This happened right below where we were exploring. Legend says that the women and the people who died in the fires still lurk around the forest. Another incident took place in the 80s or 90s. A teen was driving really fast with his friend at that exact same location as where the bar incident took place. The teen crashed into a tree, beheading his friend believing him alive. The teen was tried for manslaughter as he was driving drunk. This place is destined for bad luck. So we're exploring on this trail, approaching the house. As we approached, we heard a very distant whistle, but we thought nothing of it. As it is spring and it was warm on this day, so there were birds around. But when we stopped to take a break, we heard twigs snap. We all froze as a giant branch fell, and then the tree. It was a dead tree that was easy to push down. I looked behind and saw a human figure. As it set in with my brain, I realized that it was a man in ripped, ragged overalls that had no more color, and a worn out, colorless plaid flannel. He looked no older than 40. He looked at us for a while, and then ran at us with a bat-like stick while laughing like a maniac. We ran the other way until we got cut off by an electrical fence. Then we turned the other way. By this time, we were way off trail and in the middle of the woods. But I knew that all I had to do was go down to get back on trail. By the time we got the trail, we lost him. He looked real enough to us. But whether he was a spirit or a real person... We're never going back up there again. So at the time, I'm about eight years old and my mom got remarried and she was on her way to her honeymoon with my new stepdad. I went to my cousin's house, out in the middle of the woods, near a really old coal mine with only a gravel road to get there. Just for perspective, the driveway is about 50 yards long and it's in direct sight of the front door. 
When I get there, nothing seems wrong. It's nighttime. I'm playing Wii with my cousin, and he gets tired and falls asleep. We're sleeping in the living room, which has the front door in it, and the door was mostly glass. So we're laying on the floor, and I have direct vision through the front door. It's about midnight, and I can't sleep. My mom is in a different country, and I miss her being eight years old, so I just look out the door, laying there, kind of zoning out. About ten minutes later, I see something walking up the driveway. It looks like a shadow, but it's white-looking. It also looks like it has a pickaxe in its hand. I'm thinking, how can a shadow be white? It just doesn't make sense. And who would be outside right now with a pickaxe? At this point, I'm petrified because it stops about halfway. So about 25 yards from me and just starts hitting nothing with the pickaxe. Eventually, it stops swinging after 20 or so swings and walks back down the driveway, and I never saw it again. When I say it swings at nothing, I mean it. There was nothing there for it to hit, and it didn't make a sound. I just saw this person hitting the air with a pickaxe. After it walked down the driveway, I never saw it again. I'm 20 years old now, and I still think about this. Reliving it in my head makes me feel uneasy. It gives me chilling goosebumps, and it honestly makes my eyes water. I was too scared to say anything, and I only started telling people what I saw around the age of 15 or 16. That's when my cousin told me that he had seen the same thing before when he was little, and he never saw it again either. Most people have theorized to me that it was residual energy of a coal miner acting out his job. Perhaps where the house was used to be an extension of the mine, or maybe there were rocks or ore that they chopped up, who knows. But either way, I get goosebumps every time I think about him. When this Redditor was traveling through Valley Forge National Park, they decided to pull over to capture the gorgeous moon. What happened next was an experience they've not yet forgotten. Here's the story. Sometime last year, we experienced a unique lunar event. I believe it was called the Super Blood Moon, but whatever it was called, it was absolutely enormous. It lit up the sky, was larger than any moon I had ever seen before, and it was beautiful. During this event, I was traveling through Valley Forge National Park at about nine o'clock at night. Admiring the moon, I decided I wanted to take a picture of it, if I could do so safely. Fortunately, up on my right, I saw a parking area that still had its gate open. I pulled in so as to be safely out of the road, but only so far. I didn't want to go all the way into the lot for some reason. I stopped my car, exited the vehicle, and pulled out my phone. Kneeling down, I began to set up for my shot. The moon in view, I lifted my finger to take the photo and stopped. Every hair on the back of my neck was standing on end. Without warning and seemingly without reason, I felt an intense feeling of dread come over me. I felt as though a crowd of people was pressing in on every side, inching ever closer to me, some close enough to reach out and touch me. I closed my eyes for a moment and then turned around. Nothing. Facing the blackness did nothing to calm my nerves, though. In fact, seeing no visible reason for my fear only intensified it. Something in me felt as though I had pinpointed the source. I just couldn't see it. Not wanting to miss my chance to catch a photo of this beautiful moon, though, 
I turned around to face the camera once more. My hands shook, and I said into the night, I just want to take a picture of the moon, and then I'll be leaving, I promise. After saying this, I felt a slight reprieve in the oppressive feeling, and took two photos. Neither was in focus, though, and at that point I was so terrified that all I could think of was leaving. Cutting my losses on the shot, I took my phone and tripod, my two blurry photos, and scrambled to get back into the car. Throwing the car in reverse, I got out of that area as fast as I could. To this day, I have never stopped there again at night, and I don't intend to. One night a long time ago in the mid 80s, I was riding around my hometown at about 10 p.m. with three other friends. Berkeley County, South Carolina was really country back in the day, so driving around at night on dirt roads is one of the things kids did to have some fun. The place we were driving to was called the Gravel Hill Light. It was down a long dirt road in the middle of the Francis Marion National Forest. There were no street lights of any kind and no houses for miles. Up until that point, I had seen the light a few times and even to this day, nobody knows what it is. I know it's so bright that it's almost like a welder's torch, but about a hundred times bigger. There's no sound at all and it disappears as soon as it appears. Anyway, this night we were on our way to see the light. We would usually park our car where the dirt road divides into another road, and after 10 or 15 minutes, the light would appear. We were driving and we hadn't even made it halfway yet to the place where the road divides, when we saw in the distance a red glowing light with fog and the outline of a body standing way down in the middle of the road. We had to drive slow, like 25 miles an hour, because of all the potholes in the road. We were curious, and we all said, what's that, at the same time? Then the glow turned off for about two seconds and came back on. This time, there were three to four figures standing in front of the red glow and this time they seemed to be about 50 feet closer to us than before. They were in contorted positions, but not moving at all. The light went off again, and two seconds later, it came on. Again, they were much closer to us, and this time there were about 10 figures silhouetted against this light, all standing in weird positions. I began screaming, Turn the car around, now, I mean now. Everybody in the car quickly agreed to turn around and get out of there, which is exactly what we did. Back then, I always thought of the figure standing there as ghosts, but nowadays, I'm thinking more alien than ghosts. At 18 years old in the 80s, it just never occurred to me that it could have been alien, but now, it makes so much more sense. My friends and I really haven't talked about this since it happened. Off, I'm first off, I'm currently 51 years old, and this still bothers me to this day. I have quite a few stories throughout my life to share, but this is the first. I was living in a new state, which I had never been to before. This was in the era where our parents told us to go out and play and be back at dinner time. I was nine years old in 1979, and we had just moved to Dallas, Texas. I was playing outside by myself, and I was approached by another young girl. She seemed normal and asked to play with me. I was okay with it. She asked if I wanted to see her playroom. I didn't see any reason not to, and I followed her. 
Mind you, we lived in a townhouse that looked like row houses. So we went into her townhouse, and I never saw anyone in the house, just the two of us. The townhouse looked normal enough. We went upstairs and into a bedroom that looked like a little girl's room. She walked up to the wall and pushed a panel, which opened. She crawled in, and stupid me, I followed. Inside was this amazing room full of toys and a little black kitten she was holding. I was so taken by all that was in front of me, and I was just excited to play. We played for a bit. However, in the secret room, there were no windows or natural lighting. I couldn't tell what time it was. Eventually, I felt uncomfortable, like I needed to get home. So I told her I had to go. Mind you, never once asking for her name or telling her mine. But she turned to me with dark eyes and asked me by name if I really wanted to go because it was fun here in the room. I was creeped out because I know I didn't tell her my name. I crawled out and she followed me. I just kept moving down the stairs to the door, trying to avoid looking back. But once I opened the door, I did look back and to me she looked like part girl and part skeleton. So I ran home as it was dusk and I knew I was going to get in trouble. I didn't say anything about it to my mom. I went about my evening and slept like normal. But the next day I was disturbed by it and I decided to go back and see if she was still there. When I walked down to the town home, it was boarded up like there'd been a fire there. I stood back and looked at it for a while knowing that I had been in there yesterday, and it looked normal. I never saw or heard anything about that little girl again. I wish I had told someone who could have found out if she ever lived there. To this day, I can see that hidden playroom like it was yesterday, and I have no explanation. My grandma, or nanny as we called her, spent her last days in a hospital with my mom, dad, sister, sometimes me and others by her side. We were all very close to her, even though she lived alone. She was very tidy and her house was pretty immaculate. My parents' house, where I lived at the time, was often messy, but on the rare occasion she would visit, I think maybe a period of a decade may have passed between visits, the house would need tidying in advance. But we had one or two rooms in this big house where clothes and odds and ends would pile up, and so naturally, we'd keep this room shut when she visited, if she visited, which was super rare. And so, when she became less capable of living alone due to a medical condition, she moved in and lived with us for a few weeks before going to the hospital where she passed away. During my grandma's stay at our house, she would sometimes tour the house unaccompanied, and on one of those occasions, she ventured into a junk room. She didn't say anything to anyone, but I heard her talking to herself in a displeased manner when I caught her wandering in there. This room, by the way, was the room next to my room. I'm, time-wise, aiming to be as accurate as I can, because I'm not 100% sure exactly but this was either the night of her passing or the following night. I'm asleep and I wake up around the witching hour. My eyes are open, but I don't move or need to go to the bathroom or anything. My eyes are just open. That's strange because this kind of unjustifiable awakening never happens. I'm a really light sleeper too, and I almost always know what wakes me up. Well, as I lay there for a moment, I hear something from the room next door to mine. A noise at the time I couldn't care to catch. I thought literally nothing of it and closed my eyes to go back to sleep. When I hear again, nearly immediately, the same sort of noise. It was a shuffling sound. I closed my eyes and this happens a third time. Now I am awake awake. No one else but my sleeping parents are in the house. I keep listening. The noise sounded as though old magazines and odds and ends were either being thrown around or tidied, maybe even knocked over at times, I don't know. It was that third time that got my attention, 
and made me think of her and her connection to it. She was always wanting that place to be tidied, so maybe she finally had an opportunity to do it. For me, to go anywhere else in the house meant I had to walk past that room, as my bedroom was at the end of the corridor, and I always think of her when I do. So, the area that my grandparents lived in was somewhat known for Bigfoot sightings, and my grandfather had seen some signs of it too, a set of footprints in the snow that strode uninterrupted over a four-foot fence, calls from the forest, etc. They live at the edge of a state park in Ohio. I've seen plenty at this point, but back then I hadn't had any experience with the paranormal, at least as far as I knew. Bigfoot fascinated me because of all the cryptids it seemed the most plausible, and I'd spend some of my week there watching documentaries and discussing it with him. Now, he wasn't much of a prankster, but it had happened enough that when something actually did happen, I just thought it was him. I had just gotten into bed at the end of their trailer. I was there for maybe 20 minutes, insomnia, when I heard this call outside the window, passing by quickly down the hill. Imagine an orangutan hoot, not a loud one, just that idle huffing that they kind of do to each other. Pitch that down a ways and then have it coming from lungs that should belong to a bear or a moose. As I said, my first thought was to rationalize that maybe it's grandpa messing with me. He almost had me too. This thought lasted until I remembered the way that the trailer sits on the hill. The bottom of these big windows is sitting six feet off the ground. The noise had definitely come from above me in bed, near the tops of the window. So whatever made that noise was two or three feet higher, and the old guy didn't own any stilts. I wish I'd gone to look, but the realization that something that massive had decided to make a noise right next to me just struck me with paralyzing fear. I was playing around an abandoned area within sight of the trailer later that same week, jumping around, rotting beams and poking through whatever was left, when I just stopped. There was a massive, imminent presence behind me all of a sudden. No noise alerted me. I hadn't seen anything move. It was just pressure. Nothing inherently threatening in it, just the sheer weight of the gaze is what got me running. I have felt the presence of ghosts, at least one demon. What I'm pretty sure was eldritch shenanigans, and let me tell you, nothing has ever had the weight of that. The power. It felt more real and present than I think people can be. Anybody else have something like this happen? Not a sighting, but just a sense of something? An impossible noise or an encounter that was just too close? Let me know. This happened to me a few months ago. My two friends and I decided to take a trip to Los Angeles for fun. Keep in mind that we're from the East Coast and we don't know anybody in LA. On the last day of our vacation, we had to check out of the hotel by 11 a.m. The night before, we had gotten back to the hotel really late, so we ended up sleeping in. We knew that it would be difficult to get completely packed up and ready to leave by 11, so we decided to go to the front desk and request a late checkout of noon. We had done this at another hotel before with no issues, and this place wasn't really at capacity with guests, so we figured it was a reasonable request. I drew the short straw and was tasked with going down to the front desk. The elevator in this hotel was really old and quite small, and I found it to be very creepy. I also have mild claustrophobia. So I avoided the elevator and walked down the three flights of stairs instead. I asked the receptionist if we could have a late checkout and gave her the room number. 
She looked at me surprised and said, Yes, we approved your late checkout already, a few minutes ago. I was very confused and I asked her to elaborate. Apparently a girl had come down a minute or two before me to ask for a late checkout for our room number and then had walked out of the building. At this point, I figured that maybe one of my friends had, for whatever reason, decided to take the elevator down and ask before I did. I grumbled a bit at this because I had just walked down those stairs for no reason at all, and it didn't make any sense why they would ask me to go and then beat me to it. But I got back to the room, and to my surprise, both of my friends were there. One of them was taking a shower, and the other one was packing. It didn't look like either of them had left the room. So, I was kind of like, alright, which one of you's the prankster? They were pretty confused and asked me to explain. So I told them what the receptionist had said, and they were shocked. Neither of them had left the room, and it seemed too big of a coincidence that somebody would have the same request as us at the same time and just make the mistake of giving our room number. I have no idea who that girl was that made the request. They started joking that maybe it was me from another dimension or something. But yeah, whatever it was, the whole thing was kind of eerie. Back in 2013, when I was 18 and living in a suburb of South Florida, something inexplicable began to happen. As I was preparing to move up north to attend the University of Florida in Gainesville, I noticed a strange pattern. On the first Sunday of every month, without exception, I found myself unable to sleep. I would toss and turn all night, plagued by this feeling of dread. Sometimes, these sleepless nights would be followed by odd discoveries on my body. For instance, I once woke up to find a large red bump on my lower spine, right on my spinal cord. It wasn't itchy like a bug bite, and it wasn't like a pimple either. Another time, I found a cauterized looking brown scar across my lower abdomen, only for it to disappear in a day or two, like a scratch might have. One particular Sunday stands out in my memory. My boyfriend was spending the night, and though my parents insisted that he sleep in a separate room, we spent some time talking in my bed before parting for the night. As he was speaking, he suddenly fell silent and looked behind him, his eyes wide with fear. When I asked what was wrong, he shrugged it off, but his expression stayed in my head. Something was definitely wrong but he just wouldn't tell me. That night, the dread was more intense than usual. I was restless, and I finally sought comfort by joining my boyfriend in his room, but I still couldn't sleep. After nearly dozing off and then awakening in a fright, I returned to my room and eventually fell into a troubled sleep. The next morning, my boyfriend shared something that startled me. He revealed that when he had suddenly stopped speaking the night before, he had felt a presence outside my window. Aliens were the first thought that came to his mind, although he didn't know why. It froze him in terror. He also described hearing a loud static noise and feeling vibrations in the air shortly after I had gone back to my room. A few months later, the monthly sleepless nights ceased, never to return. To this day, I wonder about all of those occurrences. Were they merely coincidences or something more? My boyfriend and I were both on edge that night, feeling something that we couldn't explain. The strange physical marks, the sleepless nights, the fear that seemed to be over nothing. They all remain an unsolved mystery. A baffling chapter in my life that continues to interest but also unsettle me.
I'm going to preface this by saying that it isn't my story, but something that happened to my parents. They live in Western New York, upstate, and they're very open to all kinds of supernatural stuff. My dad has reason to believe in aliens, for reasons other than this encounter. That's a story for another day though. It might be a good time to add that my parents do not use substances or alcohol, and they're very sharp as far as memory, cognizance, and intuition goes. I'm just going to copy and paste the text message that my mom sent me about this experience. I thought somebody would find it interesting, or maybe even have an explanation for them. This is what my mom had to say. Last weekend, we were coming back from Jamestown. Dad and I saw a UFO, or something, between Randolph and Steenberg. There was a huge, very bright light blinking off and on in the sky directly in front of us, and it was falling from the sky, except that it was shooting directly downward. I thought it was a falling star at first, but after it blinked repeatedly, I thought, that's not a falling star. I even thought it might be a plane, but it was too bright and too fast, and it was plummeting downward with intention. Then all of a sudden, mid-sky, it was just gone. I thought, well, it must have gone behind a hill or a mountain or the trees. Right then I said, did you see that? And at the same time, dad said, what the heck was that? He said that he was thinking the same thing I was. And at the same time, we both noticed out loud, there are no mountains. And there weren't. No mountains, no hills, no trees. It was just cornfields and open space. And this thing just blinked out of existence. The next thing you know, it was directly behind us, mid-sky. And it shot directly upward, back into the sky. I was looking out of my rear view, and it lit up the whole sky, like an aura all around, but the brightness of it was still really bright white. Dad turned around watching it, and it started to follow us. We had that same eerie feeling that we did when we saw that thing that we thought was Bigfoot. All we kept saying was, what the heck is that? All of a sudden, it just disappeared. Isn't that weird? Most people would be thrilled to move out of a haunted house, but for Reddit user Kate the Girl Who Dreams, moving out of her haunted house was different. Here's her story. So my boyfriend and I had been living in this house for a few years. He had gone overseas for a little while and then returned. A few months later, and we started to pack our bags for the move into a new place. When we finished packing up the boxes and clothes, my boyfriend did something I didn't expect him to do. He put his hands together and thanked the ghosts for helping us and then said his goodbyes before leaving the room. He said he felt sad, and it would have been a lie if I had said I didn't feel the same way. For years, activity in that house had rather frightened him. It upset him as well, and a few times it was so bad that he cursed at them within the room as activity occurred, which is why his last action in that room surprised me. I felt that they had been heavily misunderstood, the spirits or whatever. Throughout the years, they had told me a lot about themselves. I had gathered a lot of EVPs and photos from the house. It was a love-hate relationship with them. At times, they would warn me of somebody around me. I don't really know if it was because I was the only tenant who was constantly there and who actually spoke to and got anything on them. One time, I was at work, and a customer said that he saw something like a little boy next to me. I started to recall the little boy entity who was in the house I lived in. I did a spirit box session later, and I asked if one of them had followed me to work. The little boy's voice actually responded and said, 
Yes, only me. I get that it was scary for some, but moving away from the haunted house was also something that felt rather saddening and freeing at the same time. It's nice in the new place. The first day and nothing paranormal had happened. A rather quiet night of sleep. It feels nice, and yet strange at the same time. Oddly lonely, but it's something my boyfriend and I will get used to. The only thing is, my boyfriend brought a piece of jewelry that one of the entities really liked with us, so we'll see how that turns out. But for now, it's quiet and peaceful, bittersweet, but still a nice change from everything that was going on before. Time for newer and better things. A change of scenery. Skinwalker Screams a few years ago, I was taking part in a church camp. We were sleeping in tents on a wide area that was surrounded by a deep forest. The next village was far away, and it was dark as heck at night without any city light shining in the distance. It always had a kind of eerie feeling, but I didn't think much of it, until this happened. The restrooms of our camp were pretty far from our tents, on the exact opposite of the campsite. So if I needed to go to the bathroom at night, I would have to grab a flashlight, get out of my tent and walk across the whole area of grass and dirt. One night I needed to pee. So I shook a friend of mine awake and asked if she could go with me to the bathroom. I was really afraid as we both got out of the tent and started walking. It was deadly silent. The only thing we could hear was the sound of the river nearby. We got to the bathroom, and as we left a couple of minutes later, I couldn't get to our tent fast enough. As we were halfway across the land, my heart froze. I could have sworn that it had gotten even more silent out than it was before. That's when we heard it. An absolutely horrible scream. Inhuman filled with dread and sorrow. It didn't sound like some kind of animal. It was so loud that we both jumped a little. It came right out of the dark forest, far away, but so loud that it felt like it was right beside me. It even echoed a couple of times until it vanished. Then the insects began to make noises again. My friend and I were terrified and ran for our lives. I hadn't slept that night, not even a little. I covered my ears like crazy, too afraid of what I might hear if I listened. I don't know if anybody else has experienced something like that. The only thing I've ever come across online is skinwalker screams, and they sounded just like that. I've had paranormal experiences before. But since I'm familiar with working with spirits and stuff, those I know how to handle, but this scream sends shivers down my spine to this day, and I still don't have any explanation for it. I never thought that Wendigos were a thing in Germany, but maybe they are? I really don't know. About five years ago, my wife and I got into a pretty big argument right after our son was first born. We were all heading to the pharmacy that morning, but both of us, being immature, decided to go separately. I had the day off, so I brought my son with me. It was only about a quarter of a mile up the street from my house, so we planned on walking. Well, I left a little late, and I didn't see my wife in the house prior to me leaving because of us avoiding each other. And when I got about a minute from there, I see my wife turn the corner. So I'm kind of not looking at her. But then when we pass, we both kind of mean mugged each other and didn't say a word. 
I go in, I get my script, and I get home. Well, she's laying on the couch in her pajamas and not even getting ready for work. So I tapped her and I said, what the heck, you're not getting ready for work. Why did you change out of your clothes? Are you not going to work now? And she was like, what are you talking about? I've been laying here in my pajamas. I'm just gonna go get my script and a few things that I was gonna get later. I was like, you didn't go to the pharmacy earlier? I just walked past you like 10 to 15 minutes ago when you were leaving. You gave me that evil, dirty look, so I gave you the same one in return. She starts saying that I'm crazy and must have been hallucinating and what did I take? I totally didn't believe her. I thought she was just gaslighting me, trying to make me feel like I was losing my mind. But later that night when we were cooled down, we all went to Walmart together to get her scripts and a few of the things that she needed. I literally felt like I was in the twilight zone. I kept saying like, come on, Jill, quit messing with me. She swore up and down and actually started getting a little irritated that I kept pressing her about it. Ultimately, I believe her that she had never left the house. It was one of the weirdest experiences that I've ever had. After I believed her that it really wasn't her, things started sticking out to me, like the look she gave me and how things about her face just were a little off. Even when she's mad at me, the look that she gives me is never that evil. And that's exactly what this look was. Just evil. Like even at resting neutrality, this face would have been full of evil and hatred. It was just like that. But still at the time, we locked eyes and I was totally convinced it was my wife. I still have no idea what happened. In Ivory Coast, West Africa, my friends and I walked into the biggest hotel and palace in the capital at 3 p.m and it was completely empty and silent. There were no cars, no taxis outside, no customers, no employees. This hotel is an enormous complex with a mall, dozens of shopping stores, pools, tennis courts, restaurants, conference rooms. It's always busy 24 seven. I needed to withdraw money from the ATM and all the doors were open, so I walked inside. It was the eeriest experience of my entire life. It was like the place had been abandoned, but why the open doors? And everything was okay, it was clean, just all the people were missing. There were no lights on, just the emergency lights. But since all the doors were open, the natural light was shining through, so, at least it wasn't too dark. The only noise came from my steps on the marble, and there wasn't even an echo. My heart was pounding in my chest because the situation just didn't make any sense. At one point, I saw some light on in a store about 50 meters away from me, with people inside, and I breathed a sigh of relief. But once I arrived in front of the store, I noticed that I couldn't really distinguish the shapes or the faces of the people, even though it was clear glass. They were fuzzy, for lack of a better word. Panic started to kick in, but I still needed that money, so I hurried to the ATM that was closest. I was afraid the ATM would be dead, but surprisingly, it was functional. I withdrew the money and ran out of the hotel using the first exit I found. Still, no one in sight. After walking a few meters, I exited on another street, and suddenly everything got noisy again. It was full of people and activity. I came back later to the hotel on another day, and it was totally back to normal. It's been almost 20 years since this happened but I will never forget this experience. I still think about it from time to time, and every time I return, 
and I walk past it, it still makes me feel weird. I've lived in the same house for a decade now. The old lady who used to live here died, and her best friend still lives next door. I'm not sure how long she has left, but this house has always been spooky. It's always cold, it's really old, and I have had a lot of weird experiences for years. It's very common for me to hear footsteps, doors opening and closing, and my cat staring at random corners. My front door once opened and slammed closed by itself, and my mother saw an apparition of a Victorian lady in the front hallway in the middle of the night. I was also once home alone showering downstairs, and I heard somebody aggressively pacing back and forth in my room, opening and slamming my drawers closed. After a while, you get used to it, and you just accept the flow of things. For a while, the activity died down, and things seemed less scary. Plus, I moved away for university, so I got a huge break from the spooky stuff. But now I'm back, and the activity has spiked. A few nights ago, I was having a particularly hard mental health day. I was up at about 4 a.m., facing the wall, trying to sleep with my back to the door. My radio is always on at a low volume, and the music was playing. But I suddenly hear the voice of a woman behind me, almost groaning. It sounded like she was letting all the air out of her lungs, almost like wheezing. I freaked out, and when I looked, there was no one there. Yesterday, I was FaceTiming my boyfriend, and I heard footsteps in my house again, which I haven't heard in months. Distinct paces up the stairs, shuffling on the floorboards. I was genuinely scared, and even thought it was an actual intruder. But nobody was there. I'm scared that perhaps I'm manifesting something. I've never heard a woman before in this house, and the wheezing was so clear. I don't want to sound dramatic, but I'm scared of losing my sanity. And maybe I am. But my house has always been spooky, and this sudden spike has no real explanation. I'm going to try to smudge the house with some herbs that I gathered to feel a little bit safer. Hopefully, it works. On May 3rd, 2017, my life was pretty similar to how it is now. I'm a bartender in a smallish beach town in Florida, so I know most people who frequent the bars in our downtown area, either as other service industry workers or patrons. I also have always lived within walking distance to work and the strip of bars and restaurants. That being said, I was 23 at the time and constantly hung out with a pretty large group of friends and coworkers and going out almost daily after work. Although this absolutely made no sense from the beginning, I thought for a while that there might be an explanation to what I experienced. If there is, I never got one. And I'm 100% sure that I do not know the person who this mystery item belonged to, but let me back up. I was going through my trunk before a camping trip one day with a guy I was dating, who lived in the apartments across the street from mine. As we're clearing things out, we find a large black duffel bag stuffed in the very back of the trunk. Upon opening it, I discovered it was full of various soccer gear. Cleats, socks, safety pads, and a jersey with a name I didn't recognize on it. I had zero recollection of anyone putting anything in my trunk. I don't have any friends who play soccer, and I never have. The name on the jersey is one that I've literally never heard of, even now and searching on social media didn't yield any results. The guy who I was dating at the time thought that I was lying and thought that it was from another guy I was hanging out with, 
or had hung out with and dated in the past. He didn't believe me that I had no idea how it got there, who the person whose name was on the jersey was, and didn't hang out with anyone who played soccer. That drove me even more insane, because I literally didn't even discover the bag in the trunk on my own previously. This was the first time I had ever seen it. I asked every person that I was around regularly as well, as well as pretty much anyone I'd seen in the past month. No one had any clue what I was talking about, or recognized the name on the jersey. Please note that there are no spare keys for my car, and I never let anyone drive my car. I always keep it obsessively locked, and my car has never been broken into. I ended up throwing the bag away a couple of years afterwards. I kept it in my trunk forever, hoping that the mystery would solve itself eventually, but no. This will forever drive me nuts. To this day, I have no idea who that person is or how that stuff got into my trunk. A few years ago, I temporarily lived in a cabin out in the woods with my friend due to some unexpected life circumstances. One night, we had another friend over, and all three of us had a smoke session in the backyard at about 3 a.m. That was when we started to hear a strange noise in the woods. It kind of sounded like a humming engine coming closer to us. Suddenly, my friend shouts in confusion as he explains that he briefly got blinded by a distant light. A few seconds later, my other friend notices a flying object near the treetops, about 40 meters away. When he points out that the object is see-through and that you can actually see the outlines of the treetops behind it, we are all just stunned and we just look in awe, in complete silence, until the object spirals away super fast up toward the sky in a manner that is certainly not possible with any known technology we have. Then it disappeared. We rushed inside, and my friend had the brilliant idea to have everybody draw what they had seen simultaneously without looking at each other's to confirm what we saw. We all showed our pictures at the same time, and we all drew the exact same thing. We kicked ourselves over not recording the event for proof, but later realized that all of us had left our phones inside while going out to smoke. We joked about the light scanning us to see if we had any recording devices on us. We all went to bed, with both of them sleeping upstairs, and with myself being downstairs, alone. As I lay down, pondering over the experience and feeling a bit uneasy, I suddenly see two orbs floating around the room. One was red, and one was blue. I get a bit freaked out and pretend to be asleep while I watch these orbs float around for about five minutes. Then they disappeared. Eventually, I fell asleep, and when I woke up the next day, I was eager to share my experience. They informed me that when they woke up and went outside, the door handle crumbled in their hands, like all of the components of the door handle had been dismantled. It was a very surreal experience overall. Aliens, advanced technology not known to the public, I don't know. But it certainly gives me this childlike hope that there's more to this life than the dull reality we live in. For almost 10 years, a few other people in my family and I have had very extreme paranormal experiences. Most of it is too long to get into now. A lot of it is tied to a house that's demonically possessed, and possibly a deceased family member who was quite emotionally disturbed and dabbled way too much in the wrong parts of the occult. But last night, I had a very intense dream. In it, this feminine demonic creature thing was over my grandfather in his sleep. I went to go fight it, and it screamed at me like a banshee. 
I backed away for a second, right before I woke up. Like I said, this thing felt very feminine, but to describe how it looked is a little bit difficult. It looked almost as though a large, roughly human-sized sheet of leather became sentient and started floating and moving and flying. It didn't have a solid, discernible form exactly either. It literally almost looked like a flying leather monster. It was so black, roughly around where its head might have been, that it was more black than black itself, if that makes any sense. But besides that, like I said, it just sort of looked like a flying leather monster. And then, of course, there was the horrible, threatening scream. I've had other encounters in my sleep with evil paranormal entities at this point, and it's pretty much all connected to that certain house, and possibly that family member. But I'm just wondering what it was. Was it actually a banshee? There's also this wolf that has been stalking around the house for a few months now. It attacked our dog, actually. The house is in Connecticut, but it's in the north, where it's very condensed forest. So it's extremely uncommon, but not unfathomable, that a rogue wolf ended up there. I personally saw a mountain lion there once, and I've seen my fair share of black bears. But I don't know what this thing could have been. I haven't actually lived in the house in question for about four years. Other family still does, though. I don't know what's going on, and I've never seen an entity like that thing before. I'm just trying to figure out if anybody might know what it is. I will start by saying I was a devout skeptic before this experience. It has changed me. It was the summer of 2016, a few months after my sister was born, and my family and I had some old family friends over at our house. We'd been hanging out nearly all day, and it was getting to be around the time of sunset. My friend and I, who I'll refer to as Adam, went on a walk to the ponds in my neighborhood and stayed there for what I remember being about 30 to 45 minutes, just enough time for it to become dark enough to see the stars. At this point, we begin the short walk back to my house when I noticed a star in the sky, which appeared to be moving. I tell Adam this, and he says that he too can see it. At this point, we're standing at the end of my driveway, looking up at the sky. We watched the star for roughly five minutes when we noticed two other stars, all of which are moving toward each other at around the same speed. Now this is where it begins to get really weird. Adam pulls out his phone and attempts to record it, but it ends up being too dimly lit for his phone's camera to see, sadly. Nearly immediately after Adam had put his phone away, all of the stars had stopped in a blank patch of sky, devoid of all other lights and stars, and formed a large triangle. These lights then began moving as one unit and turning clockwise in the sky. They remained in this formation and movement for nearly five minutes before stopping, then proceeded to move at a speed which I've never seen before, away from each other, and disappeared into the night. Based on the reactions of people back at the house, both Adam and I were visibly shaken up. When we tried to explain what had happened, they shrugged it off, as us just not knowing what we saw. I know what I saw, and so does Adam. Green Cove Springs has a history of military and government establishments and compounds, none of which are currently active. However, there is a significant amount of military infrastructure still in use as housing and places of business. It makes me wonder if this had something to do with some sort of test flight. Either way, we saw what we saw, even if we don't know what it is.
I was out walking the woods at an ungodly hour of the morning. I believe it was around one to two in the morning. Last year, I was working at a church youth camp in Wisconsin. The camp was on two sides of a highway and a tunnel under the highway connected the two sides of the camp so that the campers could more readily access the other side. My then girlfriend and our friend liked to walk the woods at night after we were done with work. The first time we had done this, we were scared shitless by a fox barking. The deer in the woods were fairly docile and didn't spook easily. We soon learned to identify the sound of the fox and we saw it several times. One night, it was just me and my ex-girlfriend walking through the woods. As we rounded a corner in the trail, I noticed movement in the field by the tunnel. Gray shapes. I assumed they were deer, and I pointed them out to my girlfriend. We continued our walk past the tunnel. Just as we passed the entrance to the tunnel, maybe about 20 yards, we heard the most horrendous screeching. It sounded as if somebody was being strangled. It did not sound at all like the fox, but we shrugged it off. We continued up the road. All of a sudden, I had this weird feeling, and I turned around to see a tall figure standing in the road. It was dressed in white, and it was all hazy. I wondered if I was a little too tired and was seeing things, so I poked my girlfriend and asked her to take a look behind us. She immediately noticed it too. Something we both noted was that our eyes kept sliding off the figure. It was like we couldn't keep our vision centered on it. I was thinking this and she voiced it without me saying anything to her. I pulled my hunting knife from its sheath, but I somehow knew that it wouldn't do anything. Without looking away from the thing, I said, let's go, now. We backed away and then started running and we didn't stop until we were back to the cabins. When I got back inside the cabin, the guy in the bunk next to me was still up texting his girlfriend. I quickly told him what I had seen. He looked at me and said, that's why I don't go out at night. I never went back out into those woods at night again. And when I talk about this, I still get chills and a nervous feeling. We had no drugs or alcohol. We were both under 21 and we were working at a church camp with strict policies. So, I have no idea what we saw. It was Christmas Eve, 2019. I had gotten into a drunken argument and I had to spend 24 hours, Christmas Day, in an empty, silent cell. I was hung over at the time and had been beaten by police for exercising in my cell. Well, after staring at the blank walls for so long, in my state of utter misery, I saw fairies. I don't believe in fairies or anything else paranormal, and yet there they were, flying around my cell. Little female figures with dragonfly wings. They never spoke, as far as I can remember. They just flew around the room and I played with them. They were semi-transparent, colorfully dressed, and I could not touch them. They were about the length of a hand, around 10 inches roughly. They had come to keep me company and keep me sane, I decided. I saw them only for a minute or so, and then they were gone. After this, I decided that they had merely been figments of a traumatized and understimulated mind, as jail cells are designed to be unpleasant, and the mind can create things in those lonely situations. I never saw them again, until this morning, exactly two years later. I awoke this Christmas morning to the exact same fairies flying around my room. I saw one clearly. She smiled and flew around me and I remembered her like an old friend. My mother entered my room and in a haze, I told her that the fairies had come to visit again. She assumed that I was dreaming, but I was very much awake. Where I live in Southwest England, fairies are something that many people believe in and have done for centuries. After the first event, I recently visited a nearby haunted jail, and I learned that one old woman escaped her cell with no plausible explanation. For the rest of her days, she swore up and down that the fairies had helped her, 
but to me, they are nothing more than fiction. Something I never even think about. I suppose it could be some sort of trauma, as every Christmas Eve since then, I've had nightmares of running from the police like I did that night. I like to consider more rational explanations, but then I'm starting to think that I do believe in fairies, and I hope they will visit me again, maybe next Christmas. I was 10 years old. My brother and I were the last ones off the bus from school every day. We were nearing my house, which is in the Midwest countryside. Lots of cows and trees and fields, stuff like that. Anyway, about a mile away from my house, I look out the window and I see an orange blimp in the sky. Standard American football shaped blimp. Surprisingly, I didn't think anything of it. Because a day or so before that, a bunch of kids and I at recess saw a blue blimp in the sky. I watched it, thought it was cool to see a blimp this far outside of town, especially near my house, and wasn't about to think another thing of it. After a few seconds, the blimp shifted from a football shape to a star, literally just shrunk before my eyes into a tiny, shiny dot that resembled a star in the night sky. Except it wasn't a star. It was just a blimp a second ago. Not even two seconds after it shifted, it launched even farther into the sky, shot down to its original height, and then shot completely off into space. It was the most bizarre thing I had ever experienced. I was a quiet kid, but being the last kid on the bus besides my brother, I shouted about it. When I got off the bus, I ran to my mother to tell her, like a crazy old man yelling about the end times. My mother said that I was crazy, naturally, and I never told my dad, because my mom shut me down pretty hard and it killed my mood. Fast forward years later, shortly after I turned 22, my dad and I took a short road trip to go pick up a car he bought halfway across the state. We talked about a lot and somehow got on the topic of UFOs. He told me that when he was 12 or 13, he and his brothers were playing down by a creek near their house, which by the way, was only a few miles away from our house. They saw an orange football shaped object in the sky. I was absolutely blown away when he said that. My father is skeptical and doesn't believe in this kind of stuff, ever. But when I shared my story, he paused and said that it was very odd to have seen the exact same thing behave the exact same way more than 30 years apart. In the early 90s, my parents sent me to a YMCA summer camp in the New Jersey Pine Barrens. It was called something like Matalonike, and it was located on the shores of a series of man-made lakes in Medford Lakes, so not exactly backwoods. We all knew the stories of the Jersey Devil, but the camp had a few of its own ghost stories. The White Lady, said to have jumped off a bridge on her wedding day, and Hatchet Harry, an axe-wielding maniac who got kids that wandered into the woods. I assumed both of these stories were developed to keep kids from wandering off. What I encountered was neither of those. I woke up in the middle of the night in my bunk, hearing some rustling in the bushes. The cabins were basically a half wall with screened windows all around, save for the back wall, with eight bunk beds, four on each side. You could lay in your bunk and look right out the windows. It really sucked though when it rained because there were no shutters to close. I had heard this rustling, so I grabbed my flashlight and I shined it into the bushes from across the front of the cabin, sweeping from bottom to top. There was nothing else in that direction save for woods as our cabin group was right on the edge of the camp. 
I didn't see anything out there, so I put my flashlight back, but kept it next to me and got ready to settle back in. But then this light reappeared. It was this bluish white light and flickered slightly, kind of like a firefly. The light slowly followed the same path that my flashlight had traced, from bottom to top, and then it disappeared. It scared the hell out of me, but I didn't bother to wake my grouchy counselor. She wouldn't have believed me anyway, since she already thought that I was just a troublemaker. So I just smushed down into my sleeping bag and tried to get back to sleep. I never saw it again after that point. My best guess is some sort of firefly that thought my flashlight was a prospective mate, although the fireflies in that area usually had a greenish hue. I've shared this story before, but I've never really gotten a satisfactory response. Maybe I'll never know what that was, and maybe it was something totally natural. But I still thought it was really freaky. In the summer of 2008, when I was 13, my encounters with the unexplained began. I spent my days at home, alone, and everything was normal, until our dogs kept ending up outside. Then, things escalated. I began hearing unexplained sounds in the house, like footsteps pacing the hallway and faint whispers. My mom confirmed she heard them too, but warned me not to tell my religious stepdad. The rest of that year went by without incident, but 2010 marked the escalation of paranormal activity. That year, my twin sister and her friend captured a strange, smoky presence in a photo. My mom even heard a voice whisper, ouch, in her ear. But the most extreme occurrences were yet to come, and they happened to me alone. My first brush with sleep paralysis was relatively calm, but a series of inexplicable events followed. All in a row, in one event, a cup in my room tipped over on its own, a bird hit my window, my light bulb exploded, and the cup fell again. I was spooked, but I tried to brush it off. The final and most haunting incident occurred a week later during my second episode of sleep paralysis. As I lay immobilized, my room darkened, and then it turned blood red. A robed figure appeared in my doorway, its eyes piercing into me, radiating evil. The numbers 13 and 3 appeared, and then the paralysis ended. Later at church, we read Psalm 13.3. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. I was chilled to the core, and to this day nothing has disturbed me more than that shadowy figure and those words. These events have left a lasting impact, and although I've had some mild paranormal experiences since then, nothing compares to the terror of that year. Even after losing my faith, the mystery of what I saw and felt still lingers. I'll never forget that summer before entering seventh grade, sometime in July. It was a Wednesday night leading into the early hours of Thursday. The previous evening, my family and I had watched an old episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Later that night, I awoke, lying on my right side, my eyes still closed, enveloped in silence. In those days, none of us used fans to help us sleep. I was awake, but simply waiting to drift back into slumber. But curiosity got the better of me and I decided to open my eyes. What I saw next, I will never be able to explain. A being was right beside my bed, fixated on a plush bear I kept with me. 
This creature resembled everything I had heard or seen on TV about aliens. Shorter, with pale gray skin, and those haunting, huge, black, slanted eyes. The shock I felt at that moment is beyond words, especially since I was only about 12 years old at the time. Pulling my covers over my head, I felt a rush of warmth and coolness over my body, which I realized later was probably shock. Fear paralyzed me. Too terrified to scream, my mind raced with a million thoughts. What if my family came rushing into my room? What would this creature do? Was it going to kill or abduct me? Had it already done so and it was just returning me? The experience was so awful that even recounting it now sends shivers down my spine. Summoning my so-called courage as an 11-year-old, I decided to try and frighten it by thrashing my legs under the covers. But nothing happened. I stayed hidden, the terror lasting for what felt like 12 hours. Finally, I heard a strange noise, a crisp sound that seemed to surround me. Lasting only about two seconds, it was something I had never heard before, nor have since. Somehow, I knew they were gone, as if the sound was their transportation leaving. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night, and it took me a long time to even share this harrowing experience with my family. They didn't believe me at first, but my mother occasionally brings it up now, suggesting that it might be the reason I suffer from insomnia, and she might be right. For some background, whenever I took the bus for school, I was pretty much alone on bus rides. I was always on one of those small buses. We didn't have any other kids on there, but the highest amount of kids on the bus was probably around five, including me. I was the only one from my school on that bus. All of the other kids went to the same school, and it wasn't mine. Plus, I've had about four different bus drivers in my time. The one I'm going to talk about lost her husband about a year before, and she was out for a long time. She had just gotten back when this took place. This happened about four or five years ago, and I was still pretty young. For morning rides, we dropped off the other kids, and we were heading to my school. We were the only ones on the road when the bus suddenly stops on the side of the road. I was really confused. I thought maybe the bus had broken down, but being the shy kid that I was, I didn't say anything. I just waited. Then the bus driver opened the door. I started to feel a bit uneasy. We weren't at my school yet, and there was nobody there, so why was she opening it? She stared out the door for like two minutes when I finally said, Are you okay? I asked. Without looking away from the door, she said in such a low voice that it gave me chills, there's a man there. There was no man there, no person at all. She kept staring for a couple of seconds when she finally closed the door and continued driving down the road. She wasn't my bus driver after that year and I do miss her. She was a very sweet lady but that moment still freaks me out. I sometimes think that maybe the man she saw was her husband. I don't know who else she would open a school bus door to. I don't know why she would stop the bus in the first place, especially for a stranger. Maybe she saw her husband and it wasn't until after the door was open that she realized he was dead and that's why she stared. I don't really know what happened that day, but I'll never forget it. When I was about 10 years old, I went with my dad to his farm. I spent my vacations there as a child. I don't have a very good memory of my childhood I hated school. 
Everything was so bad that I think I erased almost everything from my mind. But that day is like a video of 24 hours that I have never been able to erase. I got there at night, and as soon as we got there, my mom called. I knew it was because I got some bad grades and almost failed at school. My dad was talking to her, and then he told me to go close the main door. As soon as I got there, I saw a humanoid figure, totally translucent. Only its borders were visible. And behind it, six floating light balls, alternating between blue and red. It was very tall, but its proportions were not distorted. It was exactly humanoid, but I could see everything straight through it. The dogs at the farm were surrounding it and barking at it, making angry noises. I was a very scared child, but that thing didn't scare me right away. I got curious instead, so I asked, Who are you? And it took a step forward. I immediately started crying and ran back inside, calling my dad, saying there was someone in there. He turned off the phone and without hesitation, went to a wardrobe and took a shotgun hidden between some clothes. When we got outside, it had vanished, but the dogs were still barking and surrounding a certain place in the front of the house, farther away this time, but there was nothing there. It's a plain space with our house in the middle of it. There's nothing surrounding us. After 30 seconds or so, the dog stopped and came back inside like nothing had happened. My dad said that I had just seen an optical illusion of the lights from the bus that brought students that arrived around that time. I don't think so. I still have no clue what that was, and I've never had anything similar happen after that. But I remember that day perfectly, and it's going to be about 10 years from the day now, next month. For our next tale, Reddit user that Gothwitch one recounts the story of a Ouija board session gone wrong. Here's what happened. Roughly eight years ago, during spooky season, I was staying with my boyfriend's mom and her baby daddy at the baby daddy's house. My boyfriend was away in another town, visiting his grandmother and friends. My boyfriend's mom and his two sisters and I were watching a scary movie when we somehow ended up in a conversation about how the house that we were in had a history of being haunted. Fifteen-year-old me absolutely loved the occult and witchcraft, especially Ouija boards at the time. You see where this is going, right? I proposed the idea of making and using one. Stupid idea, I know. And everybody was all up in arms for a spooky October evening. I don't remember what the session consisted of regarding questions or answers, but there's a very good reason for that. About 15 minutes into our session, we get to talking about our creepy experiences. A woman's blood-curdling scream erupted from the downstairs basement, echoing up the stairs to the living room where we were. The baby daddy was asleep, mind you, and even if he hadn't been, there was no way in heck that he could have produced such a terrifying noise. Not a chance. This scream was not a regular scream. It sounded like a few different things. In one way, it sounded like a woman was being brutally stabbed to death and was in excruciating pain. In another way, it almost sounded otherworldly, straight up demonic. It reminded me of what I would imagine a banshee to sound like if I'd ever heard one. We all panicked. All four of us heard it. It sounded so clearly like a physical person, so much so that we were scared that somebody was really down there, so the mom went down to make sure that there wasn't, and there wasn't. We said goodbye and ended the session. To this day, I'm still unsure if it was a lost spirit calling for help, or if it was a dark entity 
making its presence known. When my mother was a little girl, she spent her early years in a remote area of Mexico. No electricity, no running water, and definitely no air conditioning. Due to so many people all living in one small house, it wasn't uncommon for her and a few of her siblings to sleep on the porch. Yes, you heard that right. They slept on pallets outside. She recalls that it was actually much cooler some nights on the porch than it was in the house. The porch had a screen that my grandfather had installed, and he also built their house with his own hands. The closest neighbor was miles away, so from my understanding, the house was pretty much in the middle of nowhere. My mom and three of her other siblings were the lucky ones who got to sleep outside every night. They never had any problems or fears until the night that the baker boy began to come around. He was a small child with golden curls, dressed in white baking attire, wearing a mask that was real pigskin. He would walk in circles around the house, reciting a certain phrase that my mom never really understood because it wasn't in Spanish or English. At first, they were scared, but over time, they grew to appreciate his presence. It was almost as if he was walking around the house to protect them from whatever fate had maybe happened to him. They never knew who he was or if he was even real. They just knew that they all saw him. My grandpa never believed them, and assumed that they were making it up so they could come inside the house, but they swore that they weren't. It wasn't until, over time, an outline of his path began to show up around the house. Needless to say, they didn't stay in that house much longer, and moved before they eventually made it into the States. The strangest part is that before my grandpa died, he told my mom that he had finally seen him, the Baker Boy was real. I've always been captivated by the supernatural, though I had never had any personal encounters. Being from the Midwest, one of our favorite pastimes was exploring the countryside. My friends and I were particularly drawn to cemeteries, discovering all kinds of hidden treasures. One such was a cemetery nestled on a grassy hill, where the tombstones were concealed beneath the carpet of grass. Another was hidden deep within the woods, across an ancient bridge, with no markers in sight. We had perused various local legends about haunted locations, but hadn't stumbled upon any major sights or experienced anything out of the ordinary. As we moved on to college, we maintained our bond, catching up every other weekend or so. One place we'd always yearned to find was a particular cemetery known for its paranormal activity, but its location remained a well-guarded secret. As it turned out, one of our friends had managed to locate this elusive spot thanks to county directories. Eagerly, we decided to visit. We arrived at sunset, engaging in casual ghost hunting activities like asking questions and recording potential responses. Though we weren't taking it too seriously, there was still an undercurrent of anticipation for a supernatural encounter. In a moment of adolescent recklessness, a friend extinguished his cigarette on a tombstone, hoping to provoke a reaction. I know. After asking another question, we found ourselves enveloped by a profound silence, soon broken by the sound of leaves crunching underfoot. It sounded like someone was approaching us from the darkness, though we saw nothing. Suddenly, the silence was shattered by a scream that seemed to curdle the very blood in our veins. The terrifying event left us somewhat stunned, 
and it feels surreal to recall it even now. After a moment of frozen shock, we hastened our pace toward the car, gradually breaking into a run, the silence remaining unbroken. Even now, I find myself pondering whether it could have been a large cat or some other creature, despite the improbability given the local fauna. But to this day, I have never heard a scream quite like that, and just thinking about it sends chills down my spine. I was probably 10 to 12 years old, and my friend, I'll call him Bill, and I, were going over to another friend's house, I'll call him Jake, for a sleepover. I'll keep this brief, but this has always stuck with me, and I felt like sharing. We were all hanging out in the living room in the late afternoon. I wanted a drink, so I walked into Jake's kitchen. When you walked in, there was a table to your immediate right. I think it was Jake's birthday or something, so there were some balloons tied to the chairs. I looked over and I saw an old man sitting in one of the chairs. At least I thought I did. I only saw him for a split second, and I assumed I was just seeing things. Never mentioned it to my friends because it was honestly just a, oh, I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye kind of thing. An hour or so went by, and Bill went to the kitchen for some food or whatever. When he came back, he told Jake and I that he saw a man sitting at the kitchen table. I got so excited because this was a damn sleepover and now we had ghosts involved. I told them that I thought I had seen the same thing earlier, and Jake said it sounded like his dead grandfather. Later that night, Jake's dad was working at the kitchen table before going to his bedroom. Once he was out of there, I went back to get some food, and I saw him still sitting at the table. I literally turned to ask, didn't you just leave? But there was nobody there. Some other things happened after that, but I kind of chalked those things up to our overactive imaginations given the first thing. I have two reasons, though, to believe that this wasn't a ghost. Number one, maybe we mistook one of the balloons for a human head. Totally possible. Number two, maybe I did tell my friends what I saw the first time, and I'm just blocking that part out of my memory. This would make what Bill said seem totally unbelievable, because he was younger than me and probably just wanted attention. But I'm 90% sure I never said anything to them, because I really didn't think anything of it when I first saw it. The balloon thing has been my main theory. I'm not a believer or a disbeliever in the paranormal. This is the only story I have that could have been paranormal but it's really hard to tell what happened. A while back, the night before the last full moon, I went outside past midnight. It was pretty dead quiet outside especially since it was during a big cold snap. I was out for fresh air when I heard the sound of chains and ice crackling in the near distance. I got a creepy vibe, but I tried to ignore it. There were no cars or people out that I could hear or see. Suddenly, I heard and saw my backyard gate creak open. I felt this intense presence as I heard footsteps quickly approach me. I ran inside and closed the door before it got to me. I couldn't see anything, but I did get a picture in my mind of a being with antlers or horns or something, not clear enough to say for sure, but it felt like it was speaking to me telepathically. I could tell that it read heavy energies and it told me, don't carry their burdens and that my heart was lighter than I believed. To keep it pure and I'd have nothing to worry about. I asked it about how to heal or let go of these pains and frustrations that I'd been having with trying to move on and let go of an ex-toxic friend. They told me that they didn't do that kind of work, 
and left. I got the feeling that they did heavier work. It didn't seem to have any harmful intent. There was a wisdom to it, but not something or someone that I would want to cross paths with if I were up to no good. I live in central Canada, if that helps, the prairies. I can't seem to find anything specific online about any deities or entities that match. There's Krampus, but I feel like I highly doubt that that was it. It was way past Christmas, and I don't think it's tied to Canada at all either. The words mentioning my heart being lighter than I believed made me think of Anubis, but I still don't think that it was Anubis either. I'm not really sure what I encountered that night, but it was really fascinating. <laughs>